Clues aficionados. I hope you're staying safe out there, paying attention to life's true clues around you, willing to buck up and say something if you see something. I hope that your new year is going to be fruitful throughout this whole year. And with that, I'd like to wish myself to be fruitful this year as well. I'm going to be working so hard on getting this channel out there, hoping that people like and subscribe. And if they're feeling really chipper, buy me a cup of coffee at the link provided below. With that all said and done, let's go ahead and get into it because the game is afoot. This case is a real, real sticky wicket. There are absolutely no winning factors on this end at all. Um, it is a layered family and there's a stepfather involved. There's two brothers who are half brothers, different moms, same dad. There's a mom and a younger sister that is half sister to the two boys as well. And then there's a young gentleman who was a best friend to these two boys. And it all went down on January the 10th, I believe. According to a report, officers with the FAR Police Department responded to a 911 call on Thursday at approximately 2.41 p.m. The caller reportedly a farmer who told the dispatcher that he had discovered the body of a deceased man in one of his fields. Wow. I mean, you're walking around taking care of your vegetables and stuff, looking at the dirt. Then all of a sudden, bam, body. That has to freak you the hell out. Investigators responding to the scene identified the victim as Quintanilla, who had a warrant out for a continual sexual abuse of a child and assault. And this man had been running from the law. The last lead the law had on them was from his mom saying that he was in Corpus Christi, Florida. Whether she was telling the truth or not, I don't know. But obviously he wasn't there because two South Texas teen brothers have been arrested for beating their stepfather to death after he allegedly sexually abused their half sister. And she is the one who gave them this information following the fact that the fact of there was an open warrant for this man being circulated, looking for him, trying to get him arrested for this prior sexual abuse that looked like it took on a long-term basis. Alejandro and Cristian Trevino, along with a friend, Juan Eduardo Melendez, all 18, are accused of beating Gabriel Quintanilla, 42, and leaving him to die in a field in McAllen, where his body was discovered by a farmer. That poor farmer. Multiple media reports say Quintanilla's body was found with an apparent severe blunt force trauma to his head. McAllen Police Department handed the investigation over to the FAR Police Department. FAR Police Chief Andy Harvey Jr., told Fox News the department is working an updated press release to be released soon. There seems to be some misinformation out there about this case, Harley said via email. In a previous release, FAR police said the child had made an outcry in an RV park. Police later revealed that the child is Quintanilla's nine-year-old daughter. He was the stepfather of Alejandro and Cristian, who have different mothers and are both half-siblings of the girl. It doesn't matter where the girl said that, where her outcry was made. The fact is that she made the outcry, for God's sakes. When Alejandro and Cristian Trevino found out, they became enraged and confronted Gabriel Quintanilla at the residence. A physical fight ensued between the three. And the victim, Quintanilla, was told by the mother of the home, the two, uh, mother of one of the boys and the, and the daughter, to leave. When brothers Alejandro and Cristian found out, they went out looking for him. They found him over at a neighbor's house and then another fought fight ensued at that point in time and they chased him when they found him he was in a nearby uh, apartment complex and the, then they left in a red Dodge Charger the person driving was identified as Melendez the three suspects left the location 
changed vehicles and drove back to where they found Quintanilla walking alone and injured. Because, of course, he just had the crap beat out of him two different times. Quintanilla had allegedly assaulted a third, was allegedly assaulted for a third time before being placed in a bed of a truck and dumped in the field. Police believe that Quintanilla might even still been alive when the teenagers dumped his body. Investigators reportedly believe the suspect used brass knuckles to repeatedly punch Quintanilla in the face, resulting in severe head trauma that ultimately led to his death. However, police noted they believe Quintanilla was still alive when the suspects allegedly left him in the field in McAllen. I don't wish badness on anybody, but I do believe in karma. Um, there's nothing to say this guy did it, but there's evidence to prove that something was going on there for the daughter to have said the same thing as well. Okay, so more than 2,300 people have signed a petition calling for the release of the two Texas brother and their friend who were arrested for the pummeling of their stepfather to death after he was accused of sexually abusing the sister. A change.org petition calling for the release of these three teens for police arrested in the death of a man who was accused of sexually abusing his nine-year-old daughter is quickly picking up steam online. The petition to Governor Greg Abbott was created by Carlos Eduardo Espina of College Station on Tuesday. As of 4 p.m., has garnered over 71,000 signatures and route to meeting its 75,000 75, signature goal. We asked the state of Texas to release these teenagers who could possibly spend the rest of their life in prison for protecting the, their sister, the petition says. Oh my gosh, guys, no matter how you look at it, this is just so screwed up on so many levels. Everybody that seems to be involved in this situation is suffering. The boys are going to suffer. The best friend is going to suffer. We are all taught, especially boys, to watch out for their younger sisters and to protect them. And I know these boys thought they were doing the right thing by protecting them. Of course, we know it didn't turn out to be the right thing because it just went a little too far when it should have been in the hands of the law. But at the same time, the law wasn't catching up to this person and he was just creating more victims at the same time. Um, my heart and thoughts go out to everybody in that family, to Alejandro and Cristian Trevino, to their friend, to the mom, to the daughter. And if that man wasn't guilty, oh my gosh, but um, certainly sounds like there was something going on there. And oh my gosh, I don't even know what to say about this. My heart just breaks for these boys. They're so young. I, it's hard to imagine them serving the rest of their life in prison. I'm not saying what they did was wrong, but I'm not saying it was right either. But I do agree with the fact that people are brought up to protect their kids and family members. So if something bad happens in the you know, pursuit of that, who do we look at? How do we handle that? And again, like I said, there are no easy answers here. The only thing I can hope is that the nine-year-old daughter, sister, has so much of a better future. Maybe she can get past all of this with counseling. Hopefully, the boys will get some kind of help in this situation. Best of luck to everybody out there involved. In the meantime, my true clues aficionados, please help me to grow my channel this year. If this information has been useful to you in any way, like and subscribe. If you're feeling really chipper today, you might buy me a cup of coffee. I've got the link there uh, on the screen and posted below. With that, I truly love you, my true clues aficionados. Stay safe. Be willing to speak up on behalf of those who cannot speak for themselves. And with that, I will let you go and I will talk to you on next Monday. Stay safe out there. Pay attention to true clues around you.